Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. Um, this is a continuation of uh, Solid Geometry part of uh, Advanced Mathematics course for teenagers presented on Unizor.com. Um, we have spent a considerable amount of time talking about lines and planes and now we will combine these elements and our analytical knowledge into something more complex. Um, so, today we will talk about prisms and in particular about parallelepipeds. Alright, so first of all let me just remind you um, something about prisms, what actually we call prisms. We start from cylindrical surface. Cylindrical surface is formed if you have some kind of a line in space not necessarily plain line, it can be in space, really. Uh, and you have some um, straight line somewhere else. Now, this line is called, this curve is called directors, and this one is called generatrix. And now, consider a surface which is formed by um, all the lines parallel to this one going through all the points of this curve something like this so that would be some kind of a surface which we generally call a cylindrical surface um, now the prism is a particular uh, cylindrical uh, surface and a combination of cylindrical surface and a couple of planes which we call base so let's imagine that this particular directress is not just any curve in space but it's contained on some kind of a plane and this is a parallelogram so this is the plane this is a parallelogram on that plane and this is our director so we will draw lines parallel to this one to make a cylindrical surface. And then we will have, well, this actually um, supports our uh, cylindrical surface from below. And now we will have another plane parallel to this one, which cuts it as well along some parallelogram. Well, we will prove it's a parallelogram. So, this figure, which is formed by cylindrical surface as side, and two parallelograms as the basis, the upper and, and, and the lower base, this is called the prism. And we did talk about this before. So we need cylindrical surface with directors being a parallelogram on some kind of a plane and another plane which is parallel to this one so it's two base planes now this figure actually can be general generally called um, hexahedron because there are six flat surfaces one two and four on the side so that's six that's why hexahedron Well, what's necessary to do right now is to basically um, prove the very important and the first probably uh, property of any uh, prism of that side, of, the, of that kind. Uh, that all surfaces, all faces are actual parallelograms in this case. And um, by the way, I will sell it I will say say it before I will prove it but actually this is a statement which should be uh, said after the proof of this theorem um, you see this particular type of prism where the uh, the base is parallelogram the directress is a parallelogram 
and it's basically restricted from uh, top and bottom by, by these two parallelogram. It's called parallelepiped. However, there is a very important part of this um, word, parallelepiped. It's parallel. Now, it's parallelograms, which are on each side or for side sides and both um, bases. And that's exactly what we're going to prove right now, which justifies the name parallelepiped of this particular prism. So, again, the prism contains a cylindrical surface with the directors of a parallelogram. So these lines are all parallel to this one. And another plane parallel to this one, which restricts from, from the top. So the first theorem which I'm going to prove about this figure, which we can, which we will have the right to call parallelepiped, is that every side, every face of this figure is uh, parallelogram. Well, let's start from the bottom. Bottom is parallelogram by definition, because that's exactly how we started. We said directress is supposed to be a parallelogram lying in some uh, base plane. Okay, that's done. Now, all these lines are parallel to to the generatrix, right? So, which means they are parallel to themselves. So, these lines are all parallel. Now, the plane is parallel to this plane. Now, this is a line, right? So, this point, this, this, and this, the vertices of this figure. Now, since these two lines are parallel, they are lying in the same plane. And any other line connecting these two edges, this and this, also lies within the same plane. Because if it's not, then I can always take the point and within this plane defined by these four points I can draw a parallel line to this one and uh, I will have two different lines parallel to this one uh, containing the same point one within the plane and one outside of the plane so there is no such thing so all, all the lines which are uh, connecting these points they are all within the same plane so this is really a plane so it's not just these four points lie on the same plane because these lines are parallel the whole face is lying in the same plane same thing with all other four sides all five four side faces of this figure each of them is a plane. Now, it's a plane. Now, this line is an intersection of this plane and this plane, the top base. But the top base is parallel to the bottom base. And we have um, proved a theorem that if you have two planes parallel to each other, and the plane which intersects them both, then the intersection lines are parallel to themselves. So these two lines are parallel, and these two lines are parallel, which proves that this is parallelogram. And that's for each other side. Now, what remains to be proven is that the top is a parallelogram, a parallelogram as well. But that's easy because this is parallel to this. Now this is parallel to that. But these are in between themselves parallel. So these are supposed to be parallel. They're all parallel uh, to each other. Similarly, these two lines, they are parallel to these two. These two are parallel to themselves. So these are parallel. So on the top, we also have a quadrilateral with opposite sides parallel to each other, which is parallelogram. So that proves that every face, side faces, bottom base, and the top base, all of them are parallelogram. 
So parallelepiped is a justified name. Now, in many cases, um, I've seen that they define parallelepiped as a figure with six sides, six faces, if you wish. Each of them is parallelogram. Well, I don't like this definition because it's really a theorem which we can prove if we take a much simpler definition, which we start with a prism, which is a cylindrical surface, and then define the directors. Because if you are just saying that this is a figure with six uh, parallelograms as, as faces, you really have to prove its existence. Maybe they don't exist. Um, now, this uh, particular definition, which is based on the cylindrical surface, it's a constructive way of building um, a parallelepiped. And that's why I prefer it. Now, let's just forget about this definition and let's concentrate on parallelepiped itself. So, we have parallel pivot which can be drawn something like this. And this is invisible. Okay. That's nice parallelogram. Even for my artistic talents. Okay, so a couple of definitions about this parallelogram. Um, so every flat surface is called a face. These four are side faces this one, back one, and the left. These are base faces, if you wish top and bottom, I mean, it doesn't really matter how you call it. Now, these are edges. These are all edges. Now, the points are vertices, so each of them are vertex. So we have six different faces, and that's why it's hexahedron. We have, um, what, four and four and four. We have 12 edges. And we have eight, <coughs> eight vertices. Now we also have diagonals. Diagonal can be side, like this one, for instance. These are two side diagonals. Diagonal can be base. On this base, for instance, I have these two diagonals. And on that base, I have these two diagonals. And Diagonals can be space diagonals, which means they are inside the parallelepiped. Let's say diagonal from B prime to D. From further top vertex to a nearer bottom or from a to c prime or from a prime to c these are all space diagonals so that's not much for elements of this parallelepiped now there is a concept of a right parallelepiped now remember what the right angle is right it's when the perpendicular thing uh, now the right uh, uh, parallelepiped is when uh, every side edge or if you wish a generatrix they're all parallel to <coughs> is perpendicular to the plane of the where the base is so let's go back to the construction of the parallelepiped remember there is a base plane in which we have parallelogram and then that's a directress, and then there is a generatrix, and now we built all the sides, basically, the cylindrical surface uh, from line parallel to this one. So if this line is perpendicular to the base, then every edge would be obviously perpendicular to this plane 
to the base plane, well, and to this base plane because they're parallel. So the right uh, parallelepiped is the one when the side edges are perpendicular to bases. <coughs> Sorry. So that's the right um, parallelepiped. Now, so right parallelepiped is just one particular kind of parallelepiped, which we can call general. Uh, and the only characteristic of the right parallelepiped is perpendicularity of the uh, side edges. Nothing about base. Now let's add another um, requirements for the base. What if base not just plain parallelogram but a rectangle? So number one we have a rectangle in the base and we have perpendicularity of the edges, side edges to the base. Then this particular parallelepiped is called rectangular parallelepiped. And to tell you the truth, in most cases we probably will be dealing with rectangular parallelepiped, which means you have a rectangle uh, in the base and edges are perpendicular to the base. That's kind of the simplest form and uh, it has lots of good properties. Okay, now um, we can even further restrict rest rectangular um, parallelepipeds. What if this is not just a rectangle at the base, but a square, so all sides are equal. And what's important as well, the edges also have the lengths equal to this length of this uh, side of the square. Then it's a cube, right? So we have um, all faces are um, squares of the same size, with the same size, with, with, with the same lengths of the of the edge. So this is equal to this is equal to this. These are all perpendiculars because this edge is perpendicular to the plane, which means it's perpendicular to this line and to this line. So they are all squares of the same size. Then it's a cube. Oh, by the way, I forgot. Actually, rectangular. Um, parallelepipeds sometimes are, are called cuboids. Well, I rarely use this word. I, I would prefer rectangular parallelepiped. Well, because it's actually like a cube, because it's kind of a straight edges, etc. But it's not the cube because the, the side uh, edge is not equal to the bottom edge. Then it's a cube. But if it's not equal, they're saying it's cuboid. But anyway, I prefer rectangular uh, parallelepiped. All right. Now, what's important about general parallelepiped? General. I mean, there is no requirement about uh, uh, right angles, etc. Well, the opposite sides, this and this, or this and this, or the front and the back, all these opposite sides are basically equal um, parallelepipeds, uh, sorry, parallelograms, parallelograms. Well, the fact that these are parallelograms we have already proven, right? But now if you think about this, um, let's say the top and the bottom. Now this side, because this is parallelogram, equal to this one. And this side is equal to correspondingly the BC. Now, A prime, B prime is equal to AB. So, these are two parallelograms with uh, exactly equal uh, sides. Now, they are equal in lengths and they are parallel, which means angles are also the same, since this is parallel to this, this is parallel to this, so the angle uh, B prime, A prime, D prime is the same as BAD, right? So we have two, para uh, two parallelograms with equal sides and equal angles. So they are uh, equal to each other, or congruent to each other, if you wish. So opposite faces, top and bottom, left and right, front and back, are exactly congruent to each other. Now we will prove another interesting theorem. I have defined 
space diagonals, remember, from like B prime to G. Let's forget about other diagonals so they don't interfere. So we're talking only about space diagonals. And these guys too. Okay. We have space diagonal from B prime to D. And let's take another space diagonal. Let's say from uh, C prime to A. And we can take any other pair. So, now the theorem is all space diagonals intersect each other in one and the same point and this point divides each diagonal in half. Now, actually it's a very simple theorem because consider B prime, C prime, D and A. You see, B prime, C prime is parallel to BC, BC is parallel to AD, so B prime, C prime is parallel to AD. So these two lines are parallel. And obviously they are equal in length because this is equal to this and this is equal to that. Which means that A, B prime, C prime, D is parallelogram. Because opposite sides are parallel and equal in length. But in the parallelogram we know the diagonals and these are diagonals of this parallelogram. So let me just draw this parallelogram. So this is the line and this is the line. So, this parallelogram just cuts this particular uh, parallelepiped in, in, in two diagonally from the back um, edge on the top to the front edge on the bottom. Or we can actually take any other pair, it doesn't really matter, the same exactly thing. So, any diagonals any two space diagonals are actually diagonals in the parallelogram, in this case B prime, C prime, G A. And again, we know about the diagonals of the parallelogram that they are intersecting in the middle. So, this diagonal is intersecting with this, and this is the middle point. But we can take some other pair, let's say A prime C. Now, by, by using a different parallelogram, A prime B prime C D, we see that this B prime D is intersecting with A prime C also in the middle of both of them. So it's exactly the same point, it's the middle of B prime D. So every other diagonal would intersect any other diagonal right in the middle. So it's supposed to be one and only point, uh, and this point is the middle of every space diagonal. Now, now we will consider something which I would qualify as three-dimensional equivalent of Pythagorean theorem. So let's consider we have a, uh, a rectangular parallelepiped. This is my front side. This is my top. And obviously I can draw these two. Now, it's rectangular parallelepiped, which means um, every side is a rectangle. So let's call this A, this B, and this C. And A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. And I will also put uh, the space diagonal. 
I will call it B. Well, let me remind you the corresponding theorem on the uh, on the plane. If you have A and B rectangle, rectangle, and this is diagonal C, then C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared, right? This is the theorem, uh, Pythagorean theorem, right? Now, the equivalent in three-dimensional case is D squared is equal to A squared plus B squared plus C squared. So the square of a diagonal of a rectangular, it's very important, rectangular uh, parallelepiped is equal to sum of squares of three lines, three edges, which share the same vertex with this uh, space diagonal. Now, proof is trivial, quite frankly. So let's connect A to C. Now, obviously, ACC prime is right triangle. So AC square plus CC square. equals to AC prime square AC square plus CC prime square is equal to AC prime square from the right triangle ACC prime now AC square in turn we can replace with A D square plus C D square. Right? So basically I have A D square, which is A square, plus C D square. C D is the same as A B, which is B square, plus C C square, which is the same as A A square uh, A A prime, which is C square equals to my d square which is ac square so that's the proof very easy and the last which i wanted to uh, point out to is what is the area of all the sides um edges uh, all the um, uh, side uh, uh, side sides and um and two bases together, what's the area of this particular um, rectangular parallelepiped? Well, let's just think about it. First of all, you remember that we were talking about the opposite um, faces are exactly the same, congruent to each other. So this is a rectangular uh, parallelepiped. So what's the area of the base? Well, it's A times B, right? But we have two bases, so it's 2AB. Now, the front. Front is A times C. But we have a back, which is exactly the same, so it's 2AC. And now left and right. Now, this is B and C. And again, two of them. So this is the total area of the surface of all the um, faces of rectangular per uh, uh, parallelepiped. Or you can obviously factor out 2. 2 times AB plus AC plus BC. Well, basically that's all I wanted to talk about um, parallelepipeds. What's very important is the volume. Volume is a very interesting uh, thing and I will dedicate the whole lecture to volumes of uh, parallel pivots. That would be my next lecture. And meanwhile, that's it for today. I think I've done everything. Thank you very much. And good luck.